Hello, and welcome to Game Gems. Today we're going to take a quick look at another useful programming pattern known as the command pattern. In a nutshell, the command pattern allows us to wrap actions or events into a single object, such that they can be processed at a later time. There's usually a few bits of information that need to be stored as part of the object, specifically the object that invoked the command, and optionally the target of that command. There may also be some additional data required depending on the command itself. Let's see how to define a command, and then we'll look at some common use cases. Create a new script in your project, and then open it. It's not actually going to derive from a node, so you can delete the extends line. Give your script the name command, and then define a constructor with the init method and a new function called execute. The execute function doesn't have to be called execute. It can be called whatever works for you, as long as you know by looking at it that it's the method you'll be calling to run the command. Next, we'll need a couple of member variables. I generally call them source and target. Since they'll be pointing in objects within your game, you can define them with the node type, or even node 2D or node 3D. You probably don't want to get too specific and limit yourself, though. I usually don't type them at all. Finally, add some input parameters to your constructor and assign those parameters to the source and target. You now have a basic command that does absolutely nothing. Let's fix that next. You generally want to create different kinds of commands to represent the different tasks in your game. For example, moving or casting a spell. Create a new script and name it move command, then change the class it inherits from to command. If you're not familiar with inheritance or object-oriented programming in general, this means that the move command now has access to all of the methods and properties find in its parent, in this case, command. We want to override the move command's execute method, so let's redefine it. Since our commands are purely for instructional purposes, I'll just echo out the fact that we called it with a print statement. The move command also doesn't need a target, and we want to tighten up our invocation so not to be explicitly passing in null arguments. So let's both redefine the constructor and remove the target parameter, but also call the parent's class constructor from within it, explicitly passing null for the target so nothing breaks. You'll always want to call the base command's constructor from within the child commands, especially if there's other common initialization that the command needs to be done. We'll also define the direction the command should move the source and pass that into the constructor as well. Now we need to be able to create move commands whenever we want the player to move, so I'll attach a handler to a button I've created here, and within that handler, Create a new move command by invoking its constructor, passing in the source and direction. What do we do with the command once we've created it? Well, that part is dependent on the design of your game. I usually have a command queue of some kind to process all commands as they come in. It's very useful for a turn-based game, since often game objects don't act immediately and have to wait for a specific moment in time. First, let's not assume that our UI is directly connected to our command processor. In order to pass the command along to it, then, we'll make use of the message bus pattern by creating an auto-loaded node and defining a signal that takes a command as its parameter. Then have the command processor connect to that signal and the move button cause that signal to emit via the bus. If you'd like to know more about the message bus pattern, I've linked my video on it in the description below as well as at the end of this video. Next, let's define the method the processor will call when it receives this signal. All that method does is put the command into a queue represented by an array. When the queue reaches five commands, it will execute them all and then clear the queue. Well, that's kind of arbitrary, you might be saying. Let's see a real-world example. Okie dokie. Here's the process turn code from my turn-based roguelike, which is currently in development. The gist of it is, the entire game waits for the player to do something. When they do, the game wraps that input into a command, then puts it into a command queue. Every other monster in the level then decides what they want to do for that turn, and then they put a command into the queue. Each command type has a speed factor, which indicates whether it's faster or slower than another command type. For example, moving is faster than crafting an item, so the entity that is moving should go before the entity that's crafting. The game then sorts this command queue based on these speed modifiers to get the actual order in which the command should be processed, and then it loops through all of them and processes each one in turn by calling its execute method. Fans of old school RPGs like Final Fantasy that require you to input all of your attacks and then press an end turn button to watch the route play out will probably be very familiar with this style of combat resolution. It's also handy for waypoint systems in games like StarCraft, where you queue up multiple destinations for a unit to travel to. Cozy on up to the like button and subscribe to this channel for more game gems. See you next time!